Welcome back from that break. Now it's time to put our lenses or our focus in a community in the Western North region or Western region called Jemma uh, when it comes to issues of Galamsi. Now this community has taken a strong stance. They are fighting against Galamsi. They've declared that they do not want any illegal mining activities in their town. This morning we are going to be putting our lenses or our focus in that community and see what they have to say about this one but uh, let me take us quickly to the channel one news.com to pick the story from there so you could join me uh, by taking your tablets or your phone and let's do this together so the farming community of Jama, located in ghana's western region has emerged as a symbol of uh, resistance against illegal mining commonly known as Galamsee, with the residents steadfastly rejecting all attempts to exploit their lands for mining purposes. In a report filed by Channel One TV's Western Regional Correspondent, Akwesi J. Nim, as part of the six-hour campaign against Galamse, it was revealed that the people of Jema have taken bold steps to safeguard their land. At the entrance to the town, a clear and firm message has been placed. No prospecting mining on Jema lands. Trespassers do so at their own risk. Uh, Ferrer Joseph Kwame Blay, a Catholic priest of the Order of Ferris, a minor conventual and uh, a native of Jema, has been leading the uh, leading figure in this anti galamse movement. Uh, speaking on behalf of the community, uh, he explained that their resistance is driven by commitment to protecting their farmlands and preserving their livelihoods. He emphasized the community's resolve to defend the environment from harmful effects of illegal mining, which threatens the agricultural way of life and health of their lands and water resources. Uh, and this is a quote or a statement from him. It says, we refuse to allow our lands to be destroyed for short-term gains. Our future depends on these farms, and we will not compromise that for Galamse. Uh, Farah Blay stated, the community's united stance has made Jemai a powerful example of grassroots activism against illegal mining in Ghana. The motivation behind it is because Jema farming community and we've seen Jema is a farming community and we've seen what is happening in all our neighboring towns all the way from Enchi to the last town Asinkrum where they have devastated their lands because of Galamse. So we have educated the people and the youth have accepted that Galamse is not good. They want to hold on to farming and other alternatives of livelihood. So we had to form the society and then register it as a legal person so that we can stand firm for our values, he stated. He continued, I came way back in 2015 and 2019. I met the whole community. I explained it to them with my own research on other communities where Galamse has devastated them. And I showed them videos, news and interviews I did with people to help them know that the thing is not good. I did a study called a phen phenological study of Galamse, anti clanite gold mining in Ghana. It's, it's, is it poverty alleviation or poverty aggravation? So I did some field work. Six, six weeks at Wasa, a UMF, where you have all these aspects of Galamse. So my finding is what came in my dissertation. He added that uh, they are willing to replicate their method in communities who are willing to implement the same in other communities. The chief of Jaman, Nana Enuku Anno, revealed that he had turned down lucrative offers from individuals seeking to exploit Jemes lands for mining. These offers include South Africa for medical treatment, amongst many other things. So, yes, that's a story on Channel One TV as the people of Jema have refused. They are standing mm. on their grounds, mm. saying that, no, we do not want Galamse. We are not ready mm. to give up our lands. We yeah. are not ready to give up our water bodies. We are not ready for you to come and destroy our lands. But we have a video uh, to show to you about this story. So let's take a look at that, and then we'll come back and get talking in the studio. Jema is a prominent cocoa growing community in the Awin municipality of the Western North region where many locals rely on cocoa farming for their livelihoods. Upon entering the town, a large sign that reads Jema 
no galancy greets visitors reflecting the community's firm stance against illegal mining. Amidst all the chaos we've seen within the country in terms of the pollution and destruction of water bodies, all because of the activities of illegal small scale mining, generally referred to as uh, Galamse, that is seriously devastating water bodies in the country. One, ca one particular community called Jema in the Awin uh, municipality actually stands, stands out. They are actually doing something different with their Jema anti illegal uh, Galamse advocacy CSO, which is actually making sure that this community doesn't experience the, the devastation from Galamse. And as you can see, at the heart of the community, they have a signage that is boldly written on it, no prospecting on mining, uh, Jema lands. And it's a clear uh, I mean, caution to anybody with any intention or plans to actually uh, do uh, illegal small scale money within this catchment and I'm told as a result of the activities water bodies within this area unlike the places that we have been is so clean. I have one of the key I mean, proponents of this Gemma anti galamsey advocacy uh, committee here to tell me how did they come about this very anti galamsey committee. Uh, Reverend, Reverend is a minister or a father and uh, uh, he's here to actually tell us why the German anti galamsey uh, advocacy CSO and what has been the success story so far? Well, thank you very much. I think the, the motivation behind it is because Jema is a farming community and we've seen what is happening in all our neighboring towns all the way from Enchi to the last town at Simkrum where they have devastated their land because of Galamse. So we have educated the people and the youth have accepted that Galamse is not good. They want to hold on to farming, cocoa farming and any other alternative uh, uh, livelihood. So we have to just form this society and then register it as a legal person so we can stand firm and then stand for our values. And How did you manage to get the people to buy into it? And even with the chiefs, because we know these days when you go to other places, you see chiefs actually leading in the, in the handing over of their parcels of, I mean, lands for the activities of Galamse and taking huge sums of money. How did you get the chiefs and the ordinary people, the youth who claim they don't have work to, to buy into this, I mean, uh, uh, CSO? Yeah, that is very true. But I think it's the education. I, I came way back in 2015, then again in 2019, I met the whole community. I explained to them with my own researches in other communities where Galamse has devastated them. And I showed them videos and uh, news and the interviews I did with people to know that the thing is not good for the people. I understand you, you, have a, you did a PhD research work on uh, anti Galamse, I mean, Galamse activities. Exactly. I, what, what, did you, what did you find out? Yeah, I did a study called the Phenomenological Study of uh, Galamse, that is Antisanal Gold Mining in Ghana. Is it poverty alleviation or poverty aggravation? So I did a field work six, month, uh, six weeks at Wasanyawa, where you have all the aspects of Galamse, and then my findings is what came for my dissertation. So that is uh, Reverend uh, Minister, Reverend Father, who is actually leading this um, Gemma anti uh, illegal uh, Galamse advocacy CSO that has actually been operational over here and making sure that their water bodies and their land resources are not devastated. And for that matter, very soon we'll be making our way to the river, some of the riverside within the Caribbean to confirm whether or not their advocacy is actually uh, keeping their uh, water resources and the environment that clean, unlike the places that we have been. So let's, let's take a walk to some of the riverside around Jema. Uh, just to confirm what the German members actually told us about what has been the result of the advocacy in Jama. We have come to one of the close by river uh, bodies here, uh, and I'm here with one of the, the executive, I'm told the chairman of the advocacy group to, to, to see the state of water bodies over here, which is as a result of the advocacy. Uncle, um, what river is this? Uh, we are alongside the ri river of uh, Ateka, we call it Ateka, yes. And this is a part of the rivers that we have here. We fish in it, we use it for domestic uh, purposes, we use it for farming activities, so it's very, very essential for the people of Jima. How did you manage to do this? We did it because uh, we saw that Galamse has devastated every, almost every land around our mean. And so we have to protect our land because this water, if we destroy it, we cannot no longer get it anymore. 
and if we destroy our lands, God is not going to create another land for us. So we need to protect what God has given us. What it is that uh, we have a bad laws, and fortunately enough, the whole community has come together, chief and the elders, ladies and um, men, We've all come together that we don't want galamsi. So we have some law, bad law in place. And beside that, we have some men to also take care of our land so that nobody can enter or penetrate. And that is how we, we, we've gone about. Yes. So, I mean, that is, I mean, the, the, but I just want to find out how, or just check for myself how clean this water is comparing with what I saw in the Tunnel River. Uh, before I got here, I want to find out whether this is truly clean. Oh, officer, um, as, as you are fetching, <laughs> I want to drink some for you to see that. <laughs> I, must say, I must say there is no difference between this and uh, the bottled water that we've been seeing on the streets uh, of uh, major cities, and uh, it's very clean. What, what for you should be the way forward in making sure that uh, this is protected? Yes. So for me, I would say that what Jema has done should be a template for other communities. And like when anybody does something good, everybody can adopt it. So what we have done, if government is going to give us its support so that other communities can adopt it, we are ready to share our template so that when the youth are together, government supporting, everybody supporting, it's not too late to even safeguard those lands that have been devastated. This is Atsinkanzue one of the clean I mean, river, uh, or should I say streams, in the catchment of Jema. And I'm told this is the very place that the community fetches water a lot. It's so clean that the officer will fetch for us to see. It looks so clean, and I must say, uh, this is so special. You can see the man drinking from river Atinkanzue. Uh, Zue means uh, water in the, uh, the language over here. The Awin language, Zue. This is our thinking Zue. So, this is one of the cleanest water the community is. I mean, depending on like the polluted water that we've seen on our way here from Elubo. And uh, I mean, look, look at how clean it is. It tells that uh, it's doable. You can see my palm very much clean. And it's all because of the advocacy by the German anti. Uh, illegal small scale mining over here, and uh, it's it's really producing results. Looking at the water that is in my palm. In Swanee, dear, I may have done my half one penny for my bon home buying. I'm in Swan, a moot, and my own a son. In T. Garansani had a Danyamia said Garansani had. And on a Maya Nijuaha. Na two three AM per se guarantee by no guarantee by and crane be say won't mean go school. So over here we have students who just closed from school and they are here uh drinking from the street. And as you can see, uh they are drinking all because of the fact that it is very much clean and it tells you that uh the the things that the community leaders are doing is actually benefiting the majority of the public, including these students who have actually come uh, after school and taken fresh water from the Atinkanzule. This is River Subo Subo, one of the river bodies that is deemed very clean uh, and it's just about four kilometers away from the community and it's still uh, very much clean because of the activities of the uh, Jema Anti Galamse advocacy CSO. And I just want to over here to check if it is truly uh, clean. And so I'll be fetching it. But I can say that as I'm fetching, I can see, I mean, fishes or fingerlings very much under uh, the water. And look at it. It looks just like my bottle of water that I was drinking from this very uh, river. And uh, it tells you that it is really uh, doable when it comes to protecting our uh, water bodies from the activities of Galamse, uh, which is devastating water bodies and uh, land resources all across the country. And the call from here is that people should look at what German community is doing and do same within their communities.
to prevent or stop the continual devastation of our water bodies as well as land resources. So I'm here with some of the youths uh, here in Jemma to find out about their take on this whole anti galamse advocacy that is going on over here that is helping to protect their water bodies over here. And I just want to find out from the whether they also share this idea. Uncle, you're frozen. Project Yampekalam <laughs> And no more the share, yeah, my sabbat, cafache, yeah, baby, do some pepper so we. It is sabbat, say, I'm sabbat, son, can you crump by a sabbat, yeah, and crown, crump, and cup by this time, cocoon, cup, yeah, yeah, be. The Sanya crown, it me called that, I see it me, Jacob, cocoon, my nigg, it me bread, it me, yes, car cracker, sabbat, yet you want to go, I'm saying, son, come by this time, can you be any, and can't be any now, say, and can you say, I ever saw, and then I'm her sister, cocoon, tea, say, yeah, me, yeah, be a through our local FMs over here. And we are educating people concerning about how the galamse is harmful to human health, especially our farmland and everything that's uh, supposed to be for a humanity. So we are educating them and we are still continuing to educate them. And we are also heading towards by the power vested in us as assemblymen. And uh, we have the category we have combined with the police over here because we have a police station in our community here. I have combined with them and I have also sat down with them and talked to them that uh, we don't expect that and don't want, we don't want it. So we don't want anybody to come here so that you come and, I mean, uh, bring other heads or uh, her machines. If we see you, we will never spare you. The chief of Jama, Nana Enoko Ano, despite being bedridden, continues to stand firm against Galamse pressures. Speaking to us from his sick bed, he disclosed how he turned down multiple offers including a vehicle and a promise of medical treatment in South Africa, all in exchange for allowing illegal mining in Jama. The story is that the woman is a person who is a person. First one, only 2.5 billion. No one will be there. The second one is a person who 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 is a Mitebusua,
No can say. So that is the clarion call from the youth and people of uh, Jema in the Western North. They are saying that any attempt by people with power to impose Galamse activities anywhere within the Jema community will be met with the toughest fight. Right, so that was a report filed by our Western Regional Correspondent here at Channel One TV as well as City 97.3 FM, Akwesi EJ in Nim from Jama and the Western North Region where the people or the community members are strongly and firmly standing against illegal mining in their community. I am very excited about this. This report makes me understand that, look, if we want to do it and we put our minds to it, we can do it. It starts with you and I. Kweku, yeah. uh, before we came back on air, mm. you and I were talking about mm. this. And we have mentioned the fact that, look, this is just a small farming community. Yeah. They don't have so much. Yeah. They are not living luxurious lives. No. They are not living so good mm. or bougie like mm. we down south mm. here in Accra are living. But with the education, the understanding, and knowing that these are the repercussions if we allow galamsi mm. or illegal mm. mining into mm. our communities mm. they've all come together mm. to form i mean in unity in, in unison yeah, yes and saying mm. that we are not allowing mm. anybody trespass our lands yeah. we are not allowing any chinese or yeah. any individual yeah. come into our community to mine galamsi because they are being generational thinkers yeah. They are thinking about the future of the unborn generation. Mm, mm. They are not being selfish. Yeah. They are not. They are not thinking about what the money would do for them immediately. In the, in the immediate, yes. Yeah, in the immediate I don't know what yeah, you feel about it. I know. It. So I, I, I think it's brilliant. Mm. Um, I love the fact that they have. Um, they, they are resolute right. in their decision, right. um, and you know I feel as though they will feel very justified, considering what they see in other places that thank God we didn't allow these people to come here. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure people have attempted, you know, uh, to go there. Uh, but with all that's happening now, I'm sure they're quite, they feel quite justified um, in their decision to not allow Galamse um, to take place in their communities. Now, the, the immediate gratification is what majority of the people in the Galamse areas are looking for. Because it's not as though Jiva, it's not as though there's no other way to eke out a living, mm. right? Mm. It exists. People are eking out a living. It's not, you always find ways to make a living. Right. It, has, it, it, it means that uh, you may have to be a bit more patient. Mm -hmm. You may have to accept smaller amounts of money work for income with a, and work a bit harder. Mm. Those things, right? But really what it is about Garamse is that it's a get rich quick approach approach mm. that's all it is that's all it is it's not as though God I'm saying is the only option that's available because there's farming yeah guess what we are always looking to increase our cocoa yield mm. to this this year our cocoa last year our cocoa yield dwindled to the lowest it has ever been for so as, as far as I can remember right this year we are looking to see what the yield is going to be Okay, it's threatening to be as low as, mm. it, as it was last year, right? So guess what? That's a space that you can fill, farm cocoa, mm. help lift up our yields as a nation. Because cocoa prices to government is making attempts to try and increase it, yes. the farm gate price for yes. cocoa, right? Increase the pri uh, uh, price per Per ton, um, uh, price per ton, mm. the price per bag, and so on and so forth. So that's an area. There are cash crops mm. that you can farm, right. right? If you want to get quicker crops, there mm. are quicker crops. Mm. You see, so, and then we can, uh, there, these days we're exporting a lot of things, yeah. right? So why not feed into that other conversation mm. and say, if we're looking at increasing our uh, income and our, and our, uh, resources as a people why not go into farming and encourage people and teach them look Brian Chapon has started this uh, PFJ mm -hmm. too, mm -hmm. right why not expand that across the country mm. okay and let all these communities be part of the PFJ too, mm. 
and let's look at how government can benefit from the the fact that smallholder farmers are farming we can take from them pay them from it and then put make this food that they are they are, they are, they are, they are, they are producing available to the rest of the country and even for export but there if, are different ways about if we this. are destroying our lands mm. and then giving them out to people or illegal miners yes. which lands are we going to use to do the pfg2 project well have we thought about it? Which water bodies are we going to use to, to, to water, water our, our crops? crops? Yeah. The same crops that we consume. Um, a few months ago when there was a hike in tomato prices, mm, we were mm, here, mm. we talked about it. Mm. They lamented about uh, rainfalls, weather conditions, and all of that. Have we as a people actually sat down to think that yeah. these are uh, things that we, we really need to sit down yeah. and then look at, consider them before yeah. we are allowing yeah. uh, illegal miners yeah. and galamseyers to yeah. come destroy our land. Yeah. You rightly said it is a very quick way of making money, mm. but the dwindling effect or the aftermath mm. so many years later will cost you even more, even much more, more than more. what you've taken. You, yes. It will cost you in some cases your health. Yes. It will cost you the land. Mm -hmm. So that so you spoil the land. Yes. So the, the, the whatever gold you wanted from the land, you've gotten. But the land is useless. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have to reclaim the land. Yeah. That takes a lot more money. You say you are poor already. So if you are poor, how you, what investment are you going to put to reclaim the land? All those things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So honestly, it's not. There's no winning with Galamse. There's no winning mm -hmm. with Galamse. First of all, I think that even for the small scale miners that will be legalized, mm -hmm. okay. Them, them has to be a, re, a prerequisite mm. for legalizing them exactly. to say that to say that you must reclaim the land after you are done. Utu tu from now unya esikakoko nufima, sort the land out, mm. put the land back to use, and plant trees on it right. before you walk away to the next place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. seriously, yeah. The, and we have to insist on that. If this is even for, this is not for the galamse. This is even for the legal yeah. small, the legal 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 small scale miners. Reclaim the land, plant trees before you move on. Otherwise, we withdraw your license. Of course, you cannot burn any anymore. Mm. Yeah, we really need to put um, strict measures in place and then make sure that uh, enforcement, enforcement is, is done because. Yeah. If we put the, we, we set the rules, the regulations, and yeah, all of that, and the there's points. no enforcement yeah. or there's no. Uh, OJ would always say, mm. ensure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ensure. If we are not ensuring that mm. they are obeying the rules, mm. people are being held accountable mm. for flouting rules and all of that. To what end? Yeah. To what end are we going? Yeah. But quickly, we have a few messages coming in. So yes. you could also send us your messages via the WhatsApp number 020-444-7033. Join the conversation right here with us in the studio. Or you could send it in the comment section or our social media pages using the hashtag Breakfast Daily. You can join us on social media at Channel One TV using the hashtag Breakfast Daily. So this one comes from Kezia from Adenta. She says, this is what we need as a country citizens have to stand up for their communities imagine if other members of other communities have been uh, destroyed by galamse started okay so she says imagine if other members of other communities that have been destroyed by galamse started their own campaign in their community instead of engaging or encouraging it mm. right yeah and Amma from Abokobi says I love the way Gemma is even standing against prospecting mm. yes that's where it all begins prospecting before you realize they started digging the ground in and then uh, digging out the whatever they can find uh, they are telling people not to even think about prospecting talk less of mining that's how we like it other communities should start campaigning as well I agree with you Amma 100 percent this one is coming from Sumaila from Boga. It says, please imagine that agriculture is no longer taught in our basic schools. So how do we introduce young people into hmm. agriculture? It's a problem. Very interesting question. Yeah. Very you know, interesting. It's no longer taught? 
Well, Kweku, that I am not too no, sure. No, he said but in the basic in schools. In the basic schools, yes. Yeah. But I have seen because videos we, we, on social we, media where students are planting cabbages. They are teaching them how to do. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. I, I, I spotted a video on okay. social media, okay. I think sometime last week, okay. and a couple of them. So is it, is I think about the senior high school, school, government school, okay. senior high school level, but for basic school, yeah. I am you not know, because too sure you see, you have to, when it comes to education, mm. you have to start very young. Exactly. The younger you start, the better. Exactly. Because guess what? You, you, a two-year-old kid, a three-year-old kid, is very curious, mm -hmm. wants to try everything. Yeah. So if you start that early, right, and say, playing with the little, the, you know, the plastic mm -hmm. fork, mm -hmm. the plastic, mm -hmm. um, you know, Home digging the ground, tools. Home, gardening yes. tools yes. and all of those things, they, they, they fall in love with it mm -hmm. because they're curious at that stage, mm -hmm. right? Then you come into uh, kindergarten, class one, you go on with the education, show them why we do this, what do we get out of it, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. They will fall in love with it. It, it, doesn't be, it becomes this thing where we do it because we love it. Mm -hmm. We do it because we understand the future prospects of doing what we're doing, you know, as opposed to letting certain things be, look more attractive than this one, you know. Yeah, so I think we should take a look at um, some of the um, people that have stood you know, against um, um, the Galamse, uh, as we, for us here at Channel One TV, we're saying hashtag I stand against Galamse, hashtag stop Galamse now. This is our call. We want to take a look at some religious bodies and what they are also saying. Amid ongoing demands from organized labor, over 50 institutions and civil society groups have now issued statements calling for a decisive action against illegal mining. The Catholic Bishops' Conference, the Anglican Diocese of Accra, and 19 clergymen from the Apostolic Fathers of Ghana are the latest to add their voices. Reverend Dr. Lawrence Tete, speaking on behalf of the Apostolic Fathers of Ghana, questioned the origins and persistence of illegal mining issues. Why are we not bold enough to stop Galamse? And why are we playing lip services to something that is destroying our farms, our homes, our future, and our river bodies? Why are we giving ourselves into a situation where in the coming years we'll have to be importing water because all our water bodies are polluted? Let us all stand together. Let us all come together in a massive united front to stop Galamse because certainly Galamse will destroy our community. It is said that in all the 16 regions, apart from Greater Accra region and the Vota region, every region is going through Galamse. For how long can we destroy our own? They have urged the president to enforce a ban on illegal mining to protect the environment. Would not miss words on it at all, that we are calling for a temporary ban on all forms of small-scale mining activities in the country, whilst we look for a permanent solution to this. So we are calling for a ban. And in order for us to safeguard our nation, to put a stop to it for now, so we'll come to collectively to see what solution we can create to resolve this Galamse Manus. Reverend Canon Dr. Patrick Okaija, representing the Anglican Diocese, supported a call for urgent action, highlighting the alarming distraction caused by illegal mining. As citizens, if we say we do not know the devastating effect of Galamse on our environment, our water sources, our communities, and our health, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we are indeed stewards of God's earth then. We have a duty to stop the deforestation, soil erosion, and water pollution that has been caused by illegal mining. We also have a responsibility to protect the lives of thousands of minors, many of whom are children, who are at the risk of injury. The Ghana Catholic Bishops' Conference, represented by Secretary General, Very Reverend Father Clement Kwesi Ejei, expressed concern over the pollution of water bodies and the health risks for residents relying on these sources. We urge government to stop the lift service in fighting Galamse by employing all available means to halt illegal mining activities. This includes enforcing existing laws, holding perpetrators accountable, and ensuring 
that those involved in illegal mining face the full force of the law without fear or favor. Hashtag stop, stop Galamse now. Hashtag stop Galamse now. Hashtag stop Galamse now. Galamse is genocide. Hashtag stop Galamse now. All right, so there you have it. A number of religious leaders uh, representing the larger religious community uh, speaking up against Galamse and saying stop Galamse now. It's very important. Now we've been joined on the Zoom by um, Akwesi Eje Enim. Um, he is a, a regional correspondent for the Western and Western North regions. Um, he, earlier with the report that we brought to you, he was the one who brought that report. Um, Akwesi, good morning. Morning, David. How are you? How are you this morning? I'm being fine. Wonderful. Um, I see. So, uh, following the reports that um, you you made and all that, have there been any reactions uh, from community members or leadership around the Western region? Uh, for, for now, I would say no. I mean, it's too soon. Okay. Um, we, we, we understand the regional minister might be going there uh, on 26th. There is, it's not currently confirmed by the, uh, by the regional coordinating council. Mm. What we hear is that the community actually is uh, launching another program in connection with how to ensure uh, a safe environment, mm. just to deepen what they've already started. And uh, on the program, we hear the regional minister is expected to be there, but uh, we don't have a confirmation from the regional coordinating council as to whether it's going. So, okay. so far, this is what I, I have picked up. Yeah. Now, uh, considering um, the fact that a lot of people's arguments, um, those who are still pushing for the continuance of Galamse, uh, the argument is about, uh, you know, your youth not having work to do, the youth not um, having gainful employment, and so on and so forth. And that's the argument that they stand on. What are the youth... Um, why why are the youth of Gemma so uh, you know willing to forego the things that the benefits that they will get from Galamse? Why are they so willing to forego that and continue with life as they've always known it? Well, for the youth of Gemma, their position is that it is true to coal farming and other uh, crop farming that their forefathers actually uh, used. In catering for them, mm. and so uh, if they are to actually go into the land, which is definitely going to devastate their land resources, uh, then they will be defeating what their forefathers started. According to them, uh, they, are, they, are, they are satisfied with the fact that uh, they are living okay with the cocoa farming and other crop farming that they are doing. And so, mm. uh, for them, uh, they, they don't intend going to the land. And again, uh, with what they have seen. Uh, in terms of devastation into the um, devastation of the environment in other neighboring communities, yeah, uh, it is enough evidence that Galamse, and for that matter, um, they don't intend uh, putting I mean the fate of their community uh, in that manner. Hence, mm. they are sticking to their current position of not doing Galamse. Yeah. Now, Akwesi, so I am curious about the. Uh, the level of destruction in the neighboring communities and maybe how soon it will get to their water bodies, even if the illegal mining activities are not directly being done in Jama. Are you aware if there are any timelines to uh, the advocacy spreading into the neighboring communities so that they can all come together as a region or as a people to strongly fight against illegal mining? Yeah, you're right. I mean, most of our water body streams and, and, and rivers are interconnected. And there's a point where uh, when the devastation goes on, it might find its way into other uh, river bodies that might finally get to the community, even though they are not, I mean, engaging in that. I mean, if you come to the eastern part of the western region, for instance, uh, Shaman districts, we don't see Galamsea activities happening within Shaman district. Okay. But because the river Pra, is mm. coming all the way from uh, Dabwase in Poho into their districts, which mm. they depend on. Mm. Uh, the pollution of the Pra River 
is something that they are suffering for, mm. even though they are not uh, mining within the district. And mm. so that tendency or the possibility of Jama one day suffering a pollution of their water as mm. a result of what is happening in other communities is very much, I mean, uh, possible and very rare. Uh, but in terms of what they have done to sort of get other communities uh, nearby to do what they are also doing, uh, they, they've attempted that. I mean, the, the Reverend Father, uh, whom I interviewed, told me that there was a time that the community governized and went to support a nearby community, which is already having a devastation. That is Asim Krum. Mm. Uh, but unfortunately for Asim Krum, a lot of the uh, community leaders, I mean, the chiefs, uh, the, 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 the chief and some key people within the community, they are in support of the Galamsi activities. Mm. And so their effort to actually uh, bring such a community on the lines of where or the path that they have taken was not successful, even though some people within the community, the same group community, are not happy with it. Uh, it was not successful all because the chief and some other elders of the community, they rather on the Galamsi because they've tasted, I mean, some monies uh, already from the Galamse. And so uh, that is a difficulty uh, they are facing in getting other neighboring communities to actually uh, follow uh, what they are doing. Mm, mm. Now, um, um, Akwesi, the uh, youth advocacy, I mean, for me, I, I feel as though the youth advocacy is the way to go um, in terms of putting a stop to this. Uh, we saw what the, the, the youth did in um, Achim, uh, assume, for example, and in this case, we are seeing that it's the youth of Jema who are um, rising up and supporting their leaders to say um, enough is enough. Uh, I'm not sure what your thoughts are as far as spreading youth activation across the Western region using, let's say, uh, Jema as a as a, as a maybe as a starting point or as a catalyst, you know, um, to spread that across. Do you have other communities where um, the youth are standing against Galamse in this same manner as the Jema youth are? I'm, I'm thinking of little, you know, little fires in different places where they can all come together and then amplify their efforts. Well, I can say for a fact that for almost every community that you visit, mm. you come across some few people who might not be in support. In okay. fact, there are places that you go and you might even have more people not in support of this Galamse. But okay. when the opinion leaders, I mean, the, the chiefs and his people are, are, are in cahoots with those bringing the money yeah. and, and, and devastating environment, okay. the minority will never be able to actually uh, uh, succeed in their opposition to illegal mining. So, I mean, you have such uh, agitation here and there. But mm. when the leaders in the community. That is why the Jamal case is very unique. Mm. Uh, uh, when you have the, the key people, I mean, who can drive uh, decisions in the community, I mean, spearheading that opposition to the illegal practice, yeah. it becomes easier. There's some example, I, 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 it's a bit different because there's some people, if you listen to the, uh, the youth leader and the rest, they, they, they were actually agitating because they felt the leadership were taking money that they were not enjoying some. Mm. Okay. And so they, they, they felt it wasn't so much about the environment. But mm. over here, the environment took the initial part. Mm. And so even before any attempt could be made, there was, there was I mean, uh, an opposition to it. Mm. Mm. According to the chief, you heard okay. the chief, monies were brought on okay. three occasions, including yeah. a vehicle, uh, including, I mean, an offer to even get treatment for this sick yes. chief. Yes. And he, he turned all of that. So, uh, unfortunately, even if you look at other places that we are talking about, mm. a section of the community have already complicated, I mean, implicated themselves by taking money. Yeah. And that makes it very difficult mm. uh, to actually fight it. So, I, I think, I, I keep saying that even you can have people getting, I mean, licenses and securing uh, I mean, securing the right document to come into a community to mine. Yeah. But when you come and the community says you can't, there is no way you can be successful. More especially when you have the chief leading this. And so that, that is a difference. I think if people want to emulate, uh, they will have to, I mean, uh, look at JAMA mm. uh, as a model community to, to, to actually uh, mm. follow, follow, follow after. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um,
Akwesi for um, speaking with us this morning. That's um, Akwesi Ejenim. He is a uh, Western Regional Correspondent. Uh, brought in us the report earlier and uh, also just speaking to us and giving us a more a brighter picture um, of what is really happening among the young people of Jema and their decision uh, to stand against Galamsey, primarily because of the environmental degradation that they can foresee. Um, is coming up, and I, I, that's 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 yeah, pretty yeah, remarkable. That's, yeah, it's very that's pretty remarkable, you know. Because uh, in one of the reports, a lady was talking about the fact that they feel if uh, illegal mining activities come to Jama, yes. the, they will lose their kids yeah. out of school yeah. going to take part yeah. in Which these is very activities. Yes, yeah. very yeah. very interesting. So they are not only thinking about the environment mm. they are going to lose or their water bodies they are yeah. going to lose, but also they are thinking about the future mm. of their young ones. Yeah. I mean, if you're a mother that wasn't able to attain a, settle, a certain level of education, you, you are hoping to, yeah. and investing in your children to also get better than mm. you are or you, you did. So yeah. I, I feel like this is very commendable. But the bigger problem comes in where other communities have tasted money yeah. and they are choosing money and the whatever that comes with it yeah. as compared to uh, coming together to fight this cause. Mm. It's, go it's, it's going to be a difficult one, but I hope that together as a people, we are putting our voices together. And I like the fact that religious bodies and organiz other organizations are coming yeah. together to champion the advocacy cause to stop legal mining because it is, it is no good. Yeah. I want to read something from channel1news.com. Mm. Um, this one, it says here, Achim assume youth decry environmental dis destruction uh, from Galamse, demanding transparency. All right, and it goes on here to say, the youth of Achim assume a community in the Kwai Bibrim district, have expressed deep concerns over the environmental destruction caused by illegal mining, locally known as Galamse. Mm -hmm. Now, Dominic Ufuri Forsen, the incoming Asafwa chair of Achim Usum, discussing the issue during an interview on The Point of View on Channel One TV. Um, he revealed that the community initially discovered traces of gold, which quickly escalated into large-scale mining with the introduction of heavy machinery. Now, uh, Forsen stressed that the lack of transparency and communication surrounding the mining operations, um, the, as the activities intensified, the community became increasingly aware of the significant threat posed to their water sources and overall environment. Now, I quote here, he says, this place wasn't like this. Let's say two years ago, when we started with this Galamse, probably it's been four years, but we didn't we didn't start with what we see now, okay? Um, we started by using a machine to detect if we had gold in the land um, and so on and so forth. So the story is there, and you can see clearly that um, as they've gone on, they've discovered uh, challenges that they didn't anticipate would, 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 would be there. Yeah. Right. All right. We're going to take a quick break. There's more to come.